Ah, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Los Angeles. We are here. It is the opening round. It is the Season 3 Qualifiers for North America. I'm D-Man. Alongside me is, of course, Jack. Or Joshua Jack Leesman, if which one you'd like to call you. Both work. Both work, yeah. indeed. So, we are here. We're about to witness Group B to hit the battlefield. It's time for One Trick Ponies versus Dirt Nap Gaming. Yeah. I mean, honestly, just listening to what... Josh Zion Spartan had to well. say. That's the oh. one I was after. Was Just listen to what Zion Spartan had to say. He kind of puts Dirtnap Gaming down as one of the favorites for this group. They have Prawley, who used to be a mid laner mm -hmm. for Legion, flanking on here. And he actually joined that team because he really liked the jungling style of JD Wu on that match. So it's going to be really strong synergy for them at mm -hmm. least. But the problem with that is the college champs, essentially, from UC one Irvine, trick pony, yep. One Trick Pony, they have three of those college students are really strong. I mean, I was talking with Jaws, our collegiate guy at, at Riot, and he just, he really had a lot of things to say about them. He's like, I think they're the favorite in that group. He absolutely loves them. But the question yeah. is, you know, this is a tough group overall. I mean, everybody in this team, everybody in these groups wants to win. And this is probably about as the evenest group we've got. It's definitely the evenest group we've got. And honestly, it's a tough group for the guys in the group. This is the group that a lot of the players, the, the, the teams that are in that, kind of happy they're in this group because there's no juggernauts here there's no curse there's no fear they're all against each other kind of and it's the most up in the air for sure because you don't have the clean favorites mm -hmm. and underdogs like you would before but you know if you had to pick a weakest group it would be this one overall yeah. so tell us a little bit about some of these players in this mm -hmm. in this team so obviously we've got chris i mean he's famous for riven i believe yeah he's the top laner for Dirt Nap Gaming, right. and his Riven is, I think, like a 75% win rate at like okay. 2,400 ELO solo queue just in Season 3 alone. So it's most likely going to get banned out <laughs> straight away. And that's because, is that because Riven is too strong right now? Uh, do you think there's something changed? I know I've seen Wicked tweeting out saying, oh, I love Wicked. Wi that's a really bad, yeah, bad Wicked. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'd like to tell you, seriously, I like, it, I like Riven. Yeah, I that's the best. That's the best I, I can do. Should stop doing that. I'm, not, I'm no Patrick Garber. <laughs> okay, no. I got, I <laughs> Riven is strong, but mainly in it's mainly the snowball case, right? Like if Riven gets going, if you can gank a Riven a little bit early, yeah, the lane just gets obliterated by it. So that's about it for Riven. It's about it. We've also got the one trick pony. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trick. Can we can we talk about the trick? They're in fact five minutes out. I think we should wait for the picks and bans maybe before that trick. Everyone knows what the trick is. Everybody knows it's what LeBlanc. the trick is. It's LeBlanc. So the yeah. trick, the one trick, is little Kevin LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. That is the trick. That is the one trick. The horse kick, the whatever you want to call it, they are the ponies. Whoops. At the moment, we're just... Made a slight mistake with the lobby creation. Yeah, one that, second. that was you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was someone. How I think you? it was Kobe24, personally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go with because you're on Kobe's account. Blind pick games. We could make them happen here at season three North American qualifiers, but I don't think we want to today. Pretty so glad they noticed that actually. Yeah, that that could have been fun. That would have been fun. It could have been fun. We could have seen I don't know a couple of um, Kazakhs duo mid maybe. <laughs> actually, no, it'd be Fifth LeBlanc. Match in OGN we'd almost is certainly have LeBlanc then. We'd, well, yeah, yeah, it isn't quite OGN. So. Uh, not happening. So we just went in for one trick pony and uh, yourselves to get into spec. And uh, we went for the teams to sort themselves out. Dirt Nap Gaming. So yeah. the thing with Dirt Nap Gaming that Zion Spartan just said was they have been practicing a hell of a lot with GGU. And they're like, they're not bad. Dirt yeah. Nap, they, it's actually an organization that's been searching for a team for a really long time. And they seem to kind of finally found it right now. They were not even, they didn't have to play in the online qualifier. They're one of the teams that pre qualified to get into this event. I believe they used the, I think it was an IPL open qualifier online that they managed to get in with. So it'll be pretty good for them not having to come in through the crazy open bracket. And if you think back, they're 0 for 2 on the online qualifier team so far. Because Fear and GGU were both the pre-qualified teams as yeah. well coming into this tournament. We're just waiting to see. I mean, the other teams in this group. So let's have a look at the other teams in this group. Mm -hmm. As it is, it's Falafel Gaming, which is... Admiral Zingi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Meat Playground. What are we expecting from those guys? I mean, who realistically could top this group? So, Falafel Gaming, if you think about it, is fairly unknown aside from a Zingi. And yeah. you only know a Zingi if you watch because the, odd, the one, odd one. If you watch the odd one stream. Funny story there is a Zingi is a jungler specifically. He loves <clears throat> Amumu and Maokai, pretty much above all. Mm -hmm. But he's higher rated than the odd one. 
So anytime they get into solo queue, he's always picking above him. And he'll always play jungler. He never lets the odd one play jungler. So odd one has to play other things. And then if it's general odd one, he says, well, it's Admiral Lazingi because I'm higher rated than you. <laughs> 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 Just one up to him, which is yeah. why you would have seen, uh, if you're unaware, the odd one wearing his general's cap. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was at the regionals. Yeah, it was at the regionals. Yeah, way back in mm -hmm. August. Way back in the regionals. And it's kind of like his tip of his hat saying, yeah, well, you may be <laughs> higher elo than me, but I'm in a better team. Yeah. So uh, the other team, obviously. Me Playground. Me Playground. Of course. They're guys who historically, back when they had their full roster, which included Poe Belter and Light Sludge, were one of the best online. Mm -hmm. But then whenever they went to a LAN event, they've been to two other MLGs, they pretty much fell flat on their face. every time. No, they went to one MLG and then also IPL5, they were there. And they just get dunked <laughs> when they're online. For whatever reason, whether it's because they're so young, whether it's because they have predictable strategies, not really sure. But then you come into this one, Poe Belter is 16. Mm -hmm. Light Sludge is even younger. That's their mid and their AD carry. He's 15, I believe. I think he's 15, yeah. yeah. He's just... How young is that? God damn, these kids are too good at this game. He's like a, a young age. sophomore in high school. <laughs> it's <laughs> and from there, they replace them with Arthalon, who's actually a really highly really rated hit. solo yeah. queue player who plays a lot of unconventional things, mm -hmm. which could add some... You know, it's no, it's not Paul Belter. He's number one on the solo queue, yeah. to be fair. And then their AD carry as well, just blanked on it though, is quite good as well. It's quite good. Yeah. That's all right then, as long as he's quite good. <laughs> I'll find I'll find it out. <laughs> You'll find it out. But yeah. yeah, I mean, going through all these teams, so realistically, who's gonna top it and who is gonna face either GGU or Fear? Because top the group, you get GGU, second place, you get Fear. I'm gonna guess with you'd want GGU, so you'd want to top the group, there's without a doubt. Mm -hmm. But do you think any of these teams could realistically beat Fear? I think me playground could. Yeah. In all honesty, I feel like if Meat Playground somehow fought Fear, just because Arthlon and it's balls as well, he, the reason it's ballless, that's how he gets away it's with balls. it. He puts a capital I with a lowercase L. He's balls. That's balls. his name. Yeah. And he has played all five roles. He was on Goose for a while, who's never done very well at lands, much like Meat mm -hmm. Playground in general. But he's still a very experienced player. A picture player. of a goose, I believe it was, wasn't it? Yeah, picture yeah, of a goose. A picture of a goose. Shortened for goose. Great name. And that's going to be good for them. I think they'd be the most realistic chance of beating Fear with how well, with how good Fear looked in the first round. Aside from that, though, the next the next bet would honestly be one trick ponies because they have so much talent on that team. Like the fact that they've made it to this point with so many of them being college students and not having the time to put into professional mm -hmm. gaming makes you think that they have to be really good players. Well, I mean, we talked about it on 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 stream one earlier mm -hmm. on in the day. The fact that Really, the step up, you have to focus. You know, have to play oh, ungodly hours to uh, as as a team, not just a solo queue. Solo queue, uh -huh. solo queue is one thing. Stepping up is a different thing. And you know, the fact that when we were talking to One Trick Ponies, we were talking yesterday. We heard them in their interviews. You know how they talked about the difference between the collegiate teams mm -hmm. and the pro teams. And they were saying, and this makes perfect sense when you factor in the schedules. It's not the individual skill. It's the teamwork and the communication that these other guys can put in. Because, especially as a college student, they all have variable, crazy schedules. They can still fit in many hours of solo queue practice all the time. They can grind up their individual skill hugely, which is why you see these guys. v is someone who used to be on their collegiate team who's like, in season two, was 27 or 2800 rated. Paul Belter, who's been in high school, is just crazy high rated. But to come together and not have that five-man practice... Because everyone is on a different schedule. They're in different time zones. They have to wake up at different hours. They have different class schedules. They have different exam schedules, different due dates. All that crap that happens with school or the, the glorious world that is education is <laughs> just you can't group up as well five. Well recovered. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't really have any pity for them because I'm from Europe. Okay. We have all that plus... Uh, give or take about 50 different languages <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> it's, you guys all speak the same language. And this is why I never understand why North Americans don't dominate the hell out of esports. Because you guys all speak the same language. You're all... I mean, there's only a three-hour time zone difference, let's be fair. Which is uh, around about the same for Europe, I guess. I mean, if we're going to get into it, though, all the European esports teams, for the most part, speak English. 
Like the the kids that have evolved in esports, most of them speak. You've only seen the top ones do that. Do you, okay, so uh, tell me, tell me yeah. now. So, uh, what fluid conversation have you had with Darian Diamond Prop? So that's Russia. Genja. Russia is different than the rest of Europe. Okay, for, oh, for this conversation. Oh, okay, for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It even even in other games that I've experienced, like Guild Wars and stuff, all these teams that come together from different countries generally play in English, and that is a handicap for some of them because mm -hmm. they develop their English online for the most part. Yes. They have the fundamentals and the basics from school, but they really only polish it when they're competitive gaming. Yeah, because the the, the universal language of the internet is English. Yeah, uh, There is a lot of Germans out there. There's a lot of German teams that are very strong. They certainly come through. A lot of Swedish teams, a lot of Scandinavian teams that come through out there for your Baltic States. Actually, mm -hmm. there's normally a lot of Turkish, strong Turkish teams. And now that, now that the Turkish uh, region is opened up, I'm wondering whether we may well see that develop as a, as a strong Turkish team come through. All this, two weeks from now, is the European <laughs> regionals. The EU regionals, yeah. And that, there is... So much on the line over the next two weeks between all of the competitions. Of course, we've got to mm -hmm. squeeze in Intel Extreme Masters in between that as well. Katowice. It's a busy, busy <laughs> time for us, guys. But it's awesome. i got to absolutely love it. We just went in for a uh, technical difficulty to be sorted out for Dirtnap Gaming, so there's obviously just mm -hmm. a computer issues. We are seeing them uh, joining at the moment. No, Actually, that was, no, uh, that, that was Falafel. I was I'm like, FG, Falafel, why are you, you joining in this game? It, it clearly says One Trick Pony versus Dirtnap, and Falafel are piling in. But then uh, me playground hops in for a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. We'll they can't read, soon. clearly. So they're not <laughs> educated. Um, they play the game all day. <laughs> no, it's fine. So Dirtnet Gaming as well is... My bad. I got, I got, I got distracted by my headset. That's okay. Yeah, yeah so Dirtnet Gaming versus One Trick Pony. Dirtnet Gaming, what are we expecting? One Trick Pony is coming into this one as, I guess, the college favorite? I don't know. W do you think they're going to have a fan base from the one collegiate, trick ponies? collegiate fan base? One Trick Ponies already has a fan base. Their logo actually was created by the community. Mm. They made a thread on Reddit. and were It's just actually like, an awesome logo as well. It's really good. It's really good. It's yeah. One sign with the pony coming out the side. It's just mm. it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Get the pony in there. <laughs> Dirt Nap Gaming, of course, like you say, they've been uh, picking up a team for quite a while. We are just seeing a uh, number of people joining in here. I can see Prolly is sat there. He's lingering. Lingering as a spectator. Yeah. Just spying just on the on the chat room. Maybe there's some talk about whether they're blue side or red side, but one trick ponies no dirt net gaming should be the higher the higher seed here. They they should be the higher seed. So yeah. I wonder whether they've chosen to go red or whether one trick ponies is just like, We're in there first, that's it, blue. <laughs> Boom. Done. I feel like that's what they're trying to pull here. <laughs> Maybe this is the source of some of the confusion. <laughs> getting in. They're just like, done deal. So let's talk about the games that we had earlier on today, Jack. Kay. We've already had one group done, dusted, out the way. Team Fear, mm -hmm. dominant performance, 2-0, very strong. First game, they tried a gimmick, to be fair, to Tower Team Tower Dive TV. They yep. tried a gimmick, and it almost worked. It was a really good ploy. So very first match of the day you're coming out. Team Fear, the unanimous favorite for that group, versus Team Tower Dive. No one really knew who they were. They had... Various players. They had a couple from Quebec. They had a Mexican player as well. Mm -hmm. They were just, you know, a diverse team, but seemingly no chance. It didn't seem like they were going to do anything crazy at the start of the game. But then, for the next 10 minutes, Shen was just top lane. Not sat Jungle Shen. In all the there. bushes, every bush you could have on the top lane. And he sat there. Gave Onwards the lot. Gave him a pretty big lead, too, because the Xin Zhao in that lane had about 70 to 80 minion kills. Whereas and had a really early br brutalizer as Squid's well. Squid's Elise was on about 20 yeah. for that. So it looked like it was paying off. The gold was pretty even, which 15 minutes in, that seems like a great play if you're considering one-trick ponies versus Fear. But from there, they lost a team fight at Dragon, and then Fear's team play and team comp. And the fact that Shen didn't have any gold really just rolled over them. Yeah, and Tower Dive, you know, they're, the, they're one of the teams that came from the online quality. But unfortunately for both those teams in that group, both the teams that came from the online qualifier, which basically came from the ladder, mm -hmm. have gone out already. Is that going to be a oh, tale you. of the whole day? Depends. It depends a lot on this group, yeah. in all honesty, because One Trick Ponies and even Falafel Gaming, I feel like are more well-known and almost stronger teams than, the, than what we saw in our first group of the day. Other than the other teams, though, maybe the strongest team from here would be um, Pulse. Pulse? We're, we're, yes. we're going to see those, I think, in the third or fourth group of the day. Right. But they are the strong. I believe they won the online qualifier straight out, beat everyone up. So 
That might be good. Yeah, they're in the, they're in the yeah. same group, though. This problem is with Pulse. They're in the same group with Curse and the Brunch Club and Complexity. Now, the Brunch Club is who they face in the first game that a lot yeah. of people, a lot of the top teams, have actually tipped to maybe the fifth team that will sneak through. So it's going to be tough. <laughs> like this the online qualifiers, that's the path, right? It's It would be such a roller coaster for one of those teams to come in from the online qualifier because a week ago, like last Friday, they started the 32-team online tournament. And a week later, they're live in L.A. playing for a spot in the Season 3 World Championship. So if any of them make it through there, it's honestly a story in itself. Yeah, I mean, and the main thing is that the Brunch Club, and there's Nick Wu, it could potentially yeah. be the difference between two brothers facing off. Because Team Marn with Clakey D and Nick yep. Wu is his brother. Yep. So it's A and D, the two groups, they could actually face each other. That would be pretty awesome. It would be pretty good, but it's also pretty harsh <laughs> because be good. one of those brothers would be going home and one would be <laughs> come a season a three team. gamer and yeah. potentially move to Los Angeles. Actually, to be fair, if they face each other tomorrow, they could still maybe both get through. Right, so the format for this, obviously, yeah. this group specifically, you win twice, you move on, you lose twice, you go home. Essentially, the winners play the winners and the losers play the losers. And from there, the winner moves on, losers out, and then they play the final yeah. game to end it. From there, the eight teams that move on from today all play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Winners of those, they're in. They're qualified. Four teams will qualify on Saturday. All the losers from that play off on Sunday for the final spot. There's, there's going to be some partying done on Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of sorrow on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of tears as well. So what are we looking at across the board? Okay, let's be realistic now. We're looking at the teams, all the teams that could qualify from this group. So mm -hmm. you've got Curse Gaming, definitely, I think, are almost certainly going to qualify. I they think are I'm the safe pro in saying that. favorite. Yeah. Fear potentially in there. Yeah. So we already have, are we talking about the top five? I guess, I guess you could see the top four that we think will hit through tomorrow because the fifth is a very tricky one to call. All too. right. I mean, Curse of Fear, I think. I think we're okay saying those. Okay. GGU, maybe? So for the thing is, if we're saying curse and fear, then we're almost having to say who are the top in the other two groups. Indeed. Because otherwise they'd have to beat out the other two because the yeah. two's going to play the one. Yeah. But, I mean, do you think the two teams from B could beat everyone in C right now? But you think Meat Playground's the one that could challenge it? I think Meat Playground's the one that could challenge it. <sighs> I'd, I'd, I'd still give a slight edge to Good Game University off of that. Okay, so A and yeah. D, they're going to be facing each other. you got... Azure Gaming in there. You've got Cloud9, Team Marn, and the Salad Bar. So that's actually a really tough group, I think, Group B. It is. The Salad Bar specifically is one of my favorite stories because they have a player on there, E-Homda, who hasn't really played ranked at all. He's played a couple ranked games, never really went into it. But he has 3,300 normal wins. His ranked team, the Salad Bar, went 16-1, and one, qualified for the online thing. During the online tournament, they beat paradoxical and zig's team who are former members of team dynamic and they went straight through and are now in there so looks like we are going to get things underway at last it is going to be the Aha. champion select so picks and bands what are we thinking one trick pony are we expecting to see the leblanc band from doing that gaming <laughs> gotta refocus this i i wonder if they're gonna dare him to play it like i i'd almost want them to try to because i've heard it's like one of those things one trick pony doesn't even want him playing the blog Combo on Trick Pony. They might not even want them happening. I'd love to see it. Because the team synergy with the LeBlanc is, is tricky. Yep. Is As that, we unfortunately have. It's that tricky that JD Wu said, nah, I'm playing. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, things to notice here is One Trick Pony are on blue. So I wonder if Dirt Name Gaming mm -hmm. chose to go red. Because they were the highest seed in this. Yes, they it, were. Or was it a coin toss? These are the things that we'd like to know. That we should know. We should know, Oops. but we do not know. But we as we know they're the highest seed, mm -hmm. so we we think they chose red side. Yeah, that's probably what happened. If they want the counter picks, it could work out for them, and that would be Chris potentially not one of the things that could go against Ribbon if they don't get a ban. Right. Or top lane is usually the place where you see the counter picks if you see them anywhere. So they might really just be looking to bank off Chris beating up on the top laner from... Okay, so while, while we would do wait for these guys to just sort out and finally get into picks and bans, what bans are we expecting? Riven, you're saying? LeBlanc, Riven, possibly. LeBlanc, Eve, because Eve is always banned. Always banned. Kha'Zix, maybe? Zyrus, since he's already yeah. banned. <laughs> and then the last ban would... Yeah, I'd say Kha'Zix. I think probably 
One thing that I'd love to see is Prawley's Jarvan. Not banned, but played, because he plays that a lot. Better. And there is a Lee Sin ban, so three of them already gone through. Evelyn, as you mentioned, is pretty much going to be banned throughout this whole tournament, I think. I think it's pretty safe, safe to say to at say this that, point. Yeah. Blitzcrank, maybe? I think any Blitz hooks? You could get rid of those? I don't recognize any of these guys as prolific Blitzcrank players, necessarily. But, oh no. What? They banned their own Jarvan. Dirtnet Gaming did. Why? I'm Why upset would they do that? that? Why would they do that? There's the Kha'Zix. So now that means the Riven will be available. Um, or the Blanc. Depending on who Dirtnap Gaming are going to ban themselves. Let's see what the final ban will be. they got 17 seconds to go through this one. And, and what sort of picks are you expecting here? What sort of first pick do you think they're going to head for? First pick is going to be something safe. I'd almost not be surprised if they did an Ezreal first pick or a Sona first pick. Just a really safe kind of generic thing. And Mouth this is, bite. you know, we did all that waffling early on being like, Riven, LeBlanc, they're going to be ba And they're all on the they're table. They're all available to them. And there is Miss Fortune going to be the first one. And Mumu, of course, is available as well. Mm -hmm. That would be a great synergy. We talked about it so much. Miss Fortune's ultimate, 300 AD, can do 2,000 damage at max rank. And I remember seeing Scuba Chris playing a Moomoo. Uh, I think Miss Fortune was in there as well. Definitely remember seeing Scuba Chris playing a Moomoo in the, the online tournament. It's the best synergy, right? And, well, well, well. Shen, unbanned. This is something you would almost never see in the OGN. He gets banned in every game until the blind pick, and then both teams pick him. <laughs> so their decisions for that are much different than the teams here. The qualifier. So, with the Shen and the Jace, the thing is, we saw that Jace last game that we cast, which was the qualifying final between GGU and Team Tower Dive, and that mid Jace was mean. Mean indeed, and we are seeing, looking like a Gasona alongside Misfortune, and there is the Mumu as well, so there is the combo. The question is, what sort of damage burst will they back it up with? It's going to be tricky because you can't go all in for the AoE, especially when the Korean teams have been running the Amumu and Misfortune. They usually don't actually have Sona in there with it. It's almost like too much. You get yeah. enough crowd control in with just the ultimate that you're all you're trying to fill it in with damage from there. We'll see if they're able to, ca to cancel it out. Really standard bottom lane if they decide to go with Lulu Graves. That's one of those, we're going to do some 1v2s and we're going to shove because the early shoving from Graves could come out and if Dirtnet Gaming wants to jump on one-trick ponies early, they'd want to do it with that. Absolutely, so you can see the Graves and Lulu. That will be the bottom lane versus the Misfortune Sona. The question is, what will they go with it? So, AP mid, LeBlanc is available. Do you think they're going to go for it? I don't think they're going to go for it. <laughs> see, <I think> they're <laughs> desperately talking. Little Kevin's like, no, no, no. Here's, here's the trickiest reason why they can't do it, is because the Jace pick that Dirtnet Gaming has thrown in right now can go in either lane. So if you're picking LeBlanc here, you're picking it straight into a counter. Straight blind, yeah. Straight blind into whatever Dirtnet Gaming wants to throw at you. And the thing is here as well, this is such a tricky pick for One Trick Ponies because if they put Jace mid, that unlocks Chris's ability to go top with Riven if they don't like the matchup there. So it's really, they have to pick almost versatile champions here. Things that can go top or mid and Katarina is one of those to start. So Raging Kenny, the last to pick up. It's going to be an Olaf top, I it's feel. Katarina mid, Scuba Chris will be in the jungle on a Moomoo. So there's the team set up for One Trick Pony. What's the final choice for Dirt Nap Gaming? I think they could try a Ribbon against an Olaf in top lane and run Jace mid. If they want to go all in with attack damage, there's not too many people on One Trick Ponies who could stack a lot of armor. And you can win with multiple, almost all AD champions at this point. But it's still up in the air, you know. These teams haven't shown a huge amount of games on, you know, competitive settings to really pull from. They've done a lot of online stuff, but the pressure level is so much different in these games. Sometimes they just fall back on comfy things like, what is their, what is their style, right? Like, are they a team that takes a lot of risks, or are they a team that always falls back on what they're comfortable with? Well, that is the question. They're certainly having a lot of discussion over this one. They're going to make it the last pick. It's going to be a Maokai. Ooh. So it's going to be they a just mind -gamed all of us, and right it's going to be the jungle Maokai. Very nice. So yeah, they might they mind gamed <laughs> everyone. They're just like, no, Shen is not our jungler. It is going to be Maokai. So Maokai jungle, Shen top, and that's going to be a mid lane Jace, which we just saw a moment ago. Yeah, and that just that's going to throw a wrench a little bit into what One Trick Ponies wants to do because Shen is really hard to beat out of lane, and that's kind of what Olaf almost needs to do. He needs to crush that lane gonna be tricky for Shen. Overall for Dirtnap Gaming, you worry a little about a bit 
a little bit about their damage potential because it does seem very tanky having Shen and Maokai and then a mid Jace who's kind of just the poke. Then you add Lulu on top of that, a low damage support, right? They're going to have to be very careful about the way they go, whereas one trick ponies is just an overload of damage. The Amumu alt into the Misfortune alt into Katarina and Olaf just running in and cleaning things up looks a lot more explosive on paper, but we'll see if the utility and the tankiness from Dirtnack Gaming can cancel that out. So it is all or nothing for one trick pony. As you'd expect, I guess, with a name <laughs> like that. They are all going for the AE comp. It's a comp that works very successfully if executed well. The question is, can they do that? This is the Season 3 North American Qualifiers here in Los Angeles. We are at the brand new studio of Riot Games, and we are bringing you all 16 teams. Four of them are out. Four of them are out. Two of them are out. Two of them are out. Four of them are played. Two of them are, <laughs> two of them are through. Four of them are played is the word I was after. 12 are remaining, and we are going to see which four get through. So, One Trick Pony, Dirt Nap Gaming, who are you going with? Uh, based on the team compositions, you've got to give a slight edge to One Trick Pony, but the experience and the seating all goes towards Dirt Nap Gaming. Honestly, it's an unbiased commentator. I don't know who's going to win. Well, Zion Spartans tipped his hat towards Dirt Nap Gaming. We shall see as we get into the game. It is the League of Legends Season 3. Group C, technically... But second in terms of, of TV, it's group second group of the day. So, yeah, just to get technical. So, here we go. We are underway. And, well, what are we expecting? One Trick Pony in the blue. And the red team is Dirt Nap Gaming. And I apologize in advance. It is me running the camera, which oh I haven't dear. done for a while. I'll give you tips. All five members rushing, though, for that rate, <laughs> that mid lane brush that they could get to. Dirt Nap Gaming beating them to that spot. But there was full knowledge from Untrick Ponies of where they go. Jay's skill in that acceleration gate early getting them there. And they get the ward where they want it. So they go through, ward down. So is this going to be a late invade, do we think? Do you think that ward points towards a possible, we are going to invade your blue late, or the whole team just shifting around? That's honestly a ward I haven't seen that much of. That's pretty much trying to tell where One Trick Ponies is starting the jungle, which would point towards some kind of delayed invade. Since they saw Sona running over there with Katarina and Amumu, they saw everyone, they're going in. They're going in, they're going straight past the ward, so they've said, fine, we are going to head towards your red. And Dirt Nap Gaming are going straight towards their red. So, opposition, one trick ponies. Not quite 100% on what they're going to go with. They are all stood in position, but it does mean that it's looking like currently they're going to lane switch. And that's pretty much what they're going to be forced into, especially with the red jungle being taken over by Dirt Knack Gaming here. They're really just going to trade red jungles, in all honesty. One Trick Pony's going up top, taking that out, whereas they're really hoping someone comes through for red. It's not going to happen, though. So Dirt Knack Gaming sit waiting for the red. And they start pulling that. Meanwhile, you can see One Trick Pony also leashing out the red, and they're going to head that round. The question is, who are they giving the red to? You can see Dirt Nap Gaming are going to definitely give it to JD Wu. It's got to be in the jungle. And it, you'd assume it has to be Mumu, and it will be Scuba Chris. Didn't use his smite, though. Neither team. So, actually, we know. We do see they're actually going to head all the way down. They're going to lead the mid. Aha! So, one trick ponies pulling out some more stops here. Making. I don't. You know, unless they're going to kill Prawley in the mid lane, it doesn't feel like shutting down a mid Jace is gonna happen really i don't know if they're gonna be able to deny much off that i'd say olaf is gonna be in a lot more trouble of or danger of losing his tower bottom to graves and lulu but let's see if jace can clear this this wave as sona and mf push well i mean he's just hit level two shimmy's just gonna take his time but once he gets that acceleration gate and the uh, shock blast leveled up a few you know just level three i guess he could probably start wiping the waves a little bit more meanwhile at the top lane little kevin versus chris and this is going to be a pretty interesting matchup. I didn't expect to see a 1v1 top laner. It's almost like it's banned from games nowadays. Low Kevin should be doing Red pretty Jirinola well. Red Jiranola of trouble here. You can see the flashes coming out. And there it comes Scuba Chris just to help out. Meanwhile, you can see Misfortune just around the side. Prolly could be the first one. No, Prolly does get the kill. Prolly will go down, though. He'll pay for it with his life. And that's a lot of assist kills across the board as well. But First Blood, more importantly, went to Prolly. And... He's also going to lose the experience after that. Didn't pick up any double buffs. I'd say that's a net negative, like just net even for both teams because 
Yes, you get the kill on Jace, but you didn't get the double buffs, and he lost experience. They saved the turrets. That was really just a lot of action. Neither team coming out hugely ahead. Well, he just managed to get a bit more poke on towards the mid lane. And actually, JD Wu took a very low there, having to burn through a bunch of health pots. Lil' Kevin pushing heavily on this top lane. Had got a level advantage over Chris, but I guess that's going to sort itself out in just a moment. Where is Lil' Kevin heading off towards? He's going in towards the mid lane. They do realize that, yeah, JD Wu is low. Ooh, this could be a really good counter gank, but he decides not to go in. And Lil' Kevin has to run all the way back top. All the way back top, trying to get some there. Didn't really have, lose any advantage because he pushed the lane quite heavily in itself. Let's have a look down the bottom. We can see that Scuba Chris was there. He's backing off though, so Pawn Gypsy up against there. How's he gonna fare against these two? I'll have a good 2v1. -er. That's one of the reasons you pick Olaf, is it gives you more lane versatility. And thus far, he's doing an excellent job. You can see they haven't really denied him experience. He's still managed to get 11 minion kills. He's doing all right, all things considered. And I expect him to continue to do that as those axes he throws out can clear the wave quite well. So Echo picking up a bunch of CS down there. 30 CS to 23 currently, of course. AD carry in the mid lane is Raging Kenny. Raging Kenny, the youngest member of the team as well, I believe. Coming in still as a high school student, I believe. Yeah, everyone else is, you, most of them are seniors in college, actually. So if they manage to, you know, if they don't qualify, the next go rounds during the up-down games in season three, they're all going to be graduated pretty much adults there, ready to go into the season three. But for now, they got the high school students and they got the college seniors. I'm seeing JD Wu trying to have a go up towards his top lane. Little Kevin has that ward though. Yeah, and immediately you see ping, 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 ping. Everybody very much aware, both top and bottom lane actually, because Scuba Chris crossed a tribush ward as well. So both lanes not successfully getting any ganks. And I want to point out actually the fact that Lil Kevin is top lane against Chris. Lil Kevin's a mid lane player, so he's a little bit out of his element here. We'll see if he can smell this Maokai gank coming. You know, yes, Maokai gang spent a lot, but there's a taunt. Here comes Maokai. There he goes. Managed to get the twisted advance. He used his Junpo already. There's the flash. Is it going to be enough? You can see the Ignite burning down, but he has managed to escape the damage. And they already knew he was there. They pinged it. They pinged it so heavily, but I guess he snuck around and maybe thought, okay, he's not going to wait this long. Maokai will always wait that long. <laughs> that is what he does. I remember the odd one was the first person to start playing Maokai, and he would just sit in brushes for two minutes at a time and get those ganks off. Speaking of Maokai ganks, he's coming mid, deciding to back off. Decided to back off, but that mid turret down to 470 hit points already, so their damage is being done. Meanwhile, down the bottom, he's held it off very nicely. Here we go, though. It's going to be a double jungler, though. He can see JD Wu. Stan United coming in as well. They're going for Regiron, but is it enough? Is it the right time? Scuba Chris comes in, a teleport comes in as well. It's going to be the support down of Regiron. They're going to come around. They haven't really focused their targets, though. And, well, they are going to get away with a quick kill. That is going to open the lanes up because the bottom lane is just burning down that turret. Whoa. He's done such a good job. I completely missed it. Wow, they just completely popped Jace. I was just trying to show the bottom turret is actually taking out very low. They're pinging the turret. They're saying you need to defend this one. Chris and JD will definitely coming around because that turret would have gone. Bottom to it though, took a heck of a lot of damage. And the kill we missed was just probably getting a little out of his element. MF got a double up bounce onto him as Katarina jumped in. So there was that. I gotta say though, that was almost a counter counter gank because Amuma was smelling the Maokai gank, but everyone forgot that Shen was level six, able to turn the tides there. Yeah, and the teleport also used, so that's gonna be down for a long time from Born Gypsy, which opened up, but Nevertheless, Lil' Kevin in that top lane, continuing on to farm, and has got himself a good chunk of CS. 42 CS to 39, kept himself. He's been pushed, shoving that lane very well along the top there, to be fair. And there you go, Ward on the tri-bush once again, very much aware of the situation. So this is something they've clearly prepared for. They have obviously prepared for this, and I gotta say, Chris rushing all the health in the top lane is gonna make him much harder to deal with, just as a presence up there. Surprisingly, his ultimate's already like half off of cooldown, so <laughs> those counter counter ganks are going to be coming for the rest of the game. So we do see Raging Kenny returning to mid. Let's have a look towards the items, chat. You can see there's a BF sword and of course the normal sustain items that everyone's been picking up, the Crystalline Flask, almost certainly across the board. Brutalizer, meanwhile, trying to get built up by Raging Kenny here. 
Gotta say, the BF Sword Rush on Echo is one of the more aggressive moves you'd see from Graves. He's really looking to make some kills happen in that bottom lane. Crystalline Flask and BF Sword, no boots, just full sustain there. Coming out fairly well. No big aura items are being reached or even really gone for by anyone quite yet. So we could see a much more extended laning game for quite a while with those huge collapses with teleports and shenzults like we saw earlier. Yeah, and Echo not to be confused by Mars Echo because there's two Echoes in this tournament. Well, one's one's with the K, one's, one's with the, with the C. C. Totally different. Totally different. One's 18 bit. Oh, Reginald might get caught out again here. You can see JD Wu just off the side there. Just seeing if you can get another little bit of more poke damage onto just 320 hit points left on this turret. The poke on towards JD Wu. Wow. Double up there from Raging Kenny, just bursting him down. Meanwhile, this bottom lane turret is almost gone as well. There it is. First turret of the gown. Dirt Nam Gaming get it. You can see Scuba Chris coming around. Is it going to be close enough to get in there? Stan United is not available, so he wouldn't be able to join it. But doesn't matter. Point Gypsy's turret has gone down. So the lane switch not quite working out, and Regeron just taking so much damage. Dirt Nap Gaming really came back in that bottom lane because the turret there was low, and Pond Gypsy pops his ultimate. Let's see if Cuba Chris can get in for a gank. He's actually going for Echo. He does put a bit of damage down. Oh, flashes the bandage off. Well, he's going to pick up on Profit, but Profit uses his ultimate himself. Curse the sad mommy. Is it going to be enough? Stand United just up in time. He's going to continue throttling. I'm going to try and put the camera down as I get a little bit too excited, but he's not going to close the gap. He's not going to burn. He hasn't got the flash to burn to get any flash thorns off. So instead, they're going to back away, but it does mean the dragon's available. The dragon's available. Chris down there from his ultimate, but Lil Kevin using that shoving that Katarini can do with her Sinister Steel, trying to get in on that. Looks like the Dragon's fully for DNG, but top turret taking a lot of pain. Well, Raging Kenny thought about coming in, trying popping that ultimate. He's gonna be careful, he doesn't get caught out. Ooh, had to flash out of Frolly there with the first damage, but that is the first Dragon of the game going across the Dirt Nap game. And while this has all happened, and they realize that little Kevin, he's burning that turret down well. It's getting real low, about a third left, and there's also even less left on the mid turret so if they can get some kind of coordinated push going where they can get mid and top going at the same time since they've already lost bottom turret they don't have to defend that anymore they're going to be able to get multiple turrets in a push and then take the gold right back into even so there is the top turret going down little kevin backs off successful lane for him i guess you could say because that standing night had to be used twice there then we can see raging kenny's just going to push forward another couple of shots but as you see there probably can clear their waves very quickly Blue buff Jace, you're not pushing on that guy. He's going with the Mac Noon style of leveling up skills. Every point into Q and E on Jace. No ranks in the ultimate, you get that one rank at level one, and no ranks in his W either. So making sure he gets the ultimate poke down onto Sona and the minions. And doing it as point blank as possible. That's the that's the key thing. That's the kind of the like they say Stanley Mac Noon type style. They are gonna pull the pressure and there's gonna be the ultimate going on there. They still haven't taken the turret down yet, actually. So they've taken a couple of unnecessary hits, but it is a five-man one-trick pony to push it straight up the mid lane. The rest of the team have to react to this one. Let's see where they go. You can see Shen was coming down. Doesn't have to stun United, but he is heading down the river to see if he can catch anyone off. I just want to say, Regeron bobbled his crescendo at that point because he flashed in, went back and forth for about half a second, then ulted. If he would have gotten the ult immediately, they might not have been able to flash away from it, and they might have been able to get kills off of that. But because he was delayed, they flashed out of the crescendo, and they only got the turret out of that, as opposed to potentially more. So testing the reactions of Dirt Nap Gaming. It is 2-1 in turrets, though. One trick pony with the slight advantage in turrets, but down just around about 800 gold in terms of gold lead. So Kevin, how is he building? What is he looking for? Looking like a haunting, guys. We'll see what he does after this, because this is where Katarina's take their turn. Most of them go sorcerer shoes, haunting guys. But then the question is, what next? The old build was Abyssal Scepter. But with the way penetration works now, having percentage before flat, if he wants to do maximum damage, he'd go for a Void Staff at that point. Then there's the other option of the tanky Katarinas, since you can still go Warmogs, and we have seen that. Void Boy's done Warmogs and Sunfire Cape on Katarina before, and still been pretty effective. So really, the world is Kevin's oyster right now, if he can get more gold and build more items on Katarina. I believe it's what Peke did I am Cologne as well. I'm pretty sure he did the Warmogs straight after that. So, where is he gonna go? So he's got everything completed. Porn Gypsy on his top lane. Just went in for Chris. 
to back away. Well, he walks now into the bush and he realizes that JD Wu oh, is coming. Own. He's popped the ghost. Is he going to come in? He gets the true damage down. Is it going to be enough, though? The knock up comes out. He's going to realize the Twisted Revenge is about to come. He's going to finish him off surely on the turret. Yes, he will. Pawn Gypsy 1v1. Nicely played. But meanwhile, down the bottom there, you do see Redron getting caught out once again. And that was where Chris had to go. And Olaf picked up a red buff of his own there. That was really just JD Wu being out of position. So we mentioned that Prawley joined this team because he loves the way JD Wu jungles. When he's trapped top lane away from mid, he looks to be prone to a couple mistakes there. Let's see if they can capitalize off this. Prawley trying desperately to keep these minions back in the mid lane. Prawley does manage to force Kevin back once again. Scuba Chris comes around. I really think they have enough to dive on Prawley. Prawley is pretty tanky right now do a lot of damage as well once he turns it around he's gonna burst you in the face brutalizer and bf score chris up top he's been doing a fantastic job that's funny you know, he's been working very well for him so far he really hasn't had any pressure put on him in the lane he lost the turret but that was mainly because he decided to pop his ultimate twice and help elsewhere if anything he only helped little kevin get a bit of farm this game though is incredibly close almost across the board at this point so they continue to let chris have the blue buff on a mumu he is happy to have that. And really, actually, when you look at across the team, he's kind of the ideal person for it. When you run Katarina mid, no need for blue buff. Olaf actually has pretty good mana sustain easily with his Q, so it's going to be quite fine for him. As it is, Pawn Gypsy continuing to push along that top lane. Still pretty even between these two teams. Uh, welcome very much to everyone that's just joined in from Stream A as well. This is a pretty tight game so far, 3-3. Three, three. In kills, you can see just around about 800 gold between the two teams. 2-1 two currently in terms of turrets to one trick pony, but Dirtnap Gaming are looking very strong. So a strong win from Meat Playground. Yeah. You predicted that. They just a decisive victory over Falafel Gaming from what we hear. It looks impressive and I mean, that would have been a fast game. That well, must have been 20 minutes. There's a bandage. They're caught on towards profit, but they are going to back away. Scuba Chris will not be able to fight that one. You see, as soon as that acceleration came out, they were like, yep, Prolly's in the bush. But Pawn Gypsy is continuing to put pressure on this top lane. We've already seen him taking Joe D. Wu down once. As it is, the rest of the team are heading straight south. They are looking to see if they can collapse in at anyone. We do see Scuba Chris taking down that ward. Dragon. Too sure the time up top actually back up towards the top. Let's get straight up there. You can see JD Wu is going to go down. But will Pawn Jumpsy get away from the turret? Yes, he will. Let's go back down towards the bottom lane. You can see Scuba Chris getting caught out. He's had to flash out of the way and avoid the damage. And the fight is going to continue here. Probably initiates it. And now she is straight into a immediately raging Kenny. Does manage to get his ulti off, but well, you can see Red Dragon getting taken down. And that's a triple straight in there. Three, four, zero. And well, that engage just backfired on them horribly once again. Perfect timing by Prophet with his Lulu ultimate. I was actually talking with Dirtnap Gaming yesterday. They say Prophet calls all their strategies. He's like the mistake for these guys. He's the support who calls the team strats in picks and bans. Aside from that, him and Prawley combined on the overall strategy. But that Lulu ultimate kept Prawley alive that split second longer so he could land another shock blast and really turn the tides of that fight. So Chris gonna chase out Pawn Gypsy. And if you have missed the start lane in this, we had some interesting lane phases. We had uh, Katarina, who's the mid player Katarina, little Kevin, on the top lane against Chris. We had AD, well, duo lane, I guess you could say, of duo Raging Kenny of Regeron mm -hmm. versus a Jace in the mid. And down the bottom, we also had Echo and Prophet straight away versus a blank lane at the moment because no one's there. And considering <laughs> that it was a 2v1 mid, lane against Prawley. He's done a fantastic job as getting his mini kills back up. Now with the dragon here, clicking through, pink ward going down. Gonna kill another ward if there's still a pink ward, but no, he's out of vision, just barely of that pink. Deciding to go away from the dragon, not really committing into a 5v5 fight here. They're a little scared of dirt now. Yeah, not surprisingly so. Oh, they wow. didn't have Olaf in there. Stan United already used. He's gonna just home guard boots already still used because he used the Stan United from the base. And that's gonna be Scuba Chris going in. The ultimate comes across. Raging Kenny doesn't have, he has bullet time available. Is he gonna go for it? He realizes they're all in the line. That would be the perfect time, but instead he can't manage to line and find a point that he can land in. Pawn Gypsy's just gonna get chased away here. And well, Dirtnap Gaming huh. turning it on when they had the benefit. So home guard boot teleport like Stan United Shen. Awesome, by the way. <laughs> it almost looked like he went in a little too far. 
kind of forgetting that the rest of his team didn't have home guard, and he got, went a little deep, but they managed to get the kill, get the pressure back, and probably get a dragon off this, although probably gets caught by Banish. Probably does get caught, Scoop, oh! because it's taking so low, though. Chris is going to finish that one off. Echo picks up the kill, and everybody has to back out, and they are just chasing shadows right now. One Trick Pony can't seem to pull anything off. The knockback there by Crawley was excellent. I felt like I felt like he was on the wrong in the wrong spot, and One Trick Ponies obviously felt the same way. But that was clearly premeditated, and another pick kill picked up for Dirtnap. So Dragon goes down, and Gold extends Dirtnap gaming. As we kind of predicted, well, actually, to be fair, is as uh, the players predicted, would be one of the likely ones to come through from this one. And if they do, they're going to face a very quick Meat Playground. Interesting to see how Meat Playground do without their two members. They're two sustained members that they've had for such a long time as well. Well, for Meat Playground, it's just one of those things. Arthalon and Balls are very experienced players, right? Like Arthalon, not on the tournament scene, but in the solo queue scene, very versatile. They're still quite a dangerous team in this tournament. Point Gypsy, you can see, stick into this top lane. Yeah, I've had a good go at it. It's taking a good half health off the inner turret. No inner turret is down anywhere else on the map, as it is. Just two ones still in turret, so outer turret still remaining in this mid, and really remaining untouched, I guess you could say, for One Trick Pony. That's the one big thing they have going for them right now. And one of the reasons that that mid turret is so healthy is because they've had the AD carrying support there almost the entire time. So their push through was incredibly strong and has never been able to come back. In the fights, though, they have to find a way to set up Raging Penny's misfortune ult. Because right now, they're getting dove on so hard with the Shock Blast Acceleration Gates coming through from Prawley, from the Home Guard Stan United Shen that flies in, to just Maokai diving on, that Raging Kenny can never just set up and fire off that ultimate. They're always putting pressure on him, and that's what you do against Misfortune. They need to find a winner to get that pressure off so they can pull off their combo. Let's see JD Wu with an Oracle. That's a pretty early Oracle, 20 minutes in. Starting to clear out those wards. Trying to clear out big some advantages. They have sent Echo down the bottom. He's going to clear out the waves. He's picked up the static shift, you can see already. Kind of almost becoming the standard item, the second build item now. And JD Wu. They're going to put, push forward here. They know that Echo's down the bottom there. They're going to try and drive some sort of advantage here. You can see Scuba Chris charging on through. The rest of the team are going to have to react to this one. Stand United is available, so if Chris wants to join in, they're going to fight this. They can't fight in the tower. And the thing is, all that Dirtnap Gaming has to do is keep the minions back because Chris will slowly take that top turret if they can keep the push from happening. This is a really good situation for Dirtnap Gaming. Almost certainly, one trick Ponies is going to have to fall back. And there you go, Chris. Going to go on towards that turret like you mentioned. He will take the turret. That's going to even things out to two, two in turrets and push the gold once again a little further. In Dirtnap Gaming's advantages, they now have close or well, just bang on 5,000 gold advantage, which is quite a chunk at 21 minutes in. One Trick Pony need to really pick up the synergy of one of their top team fights. They have the ultis, they have the Amumu Curse the Sad Mommy, they have the Crescendo from Red Run, they have Bullet Time from Raging Kenny, they've just got to land them at the right time, and then Lil' Kevin, of course, who really we haven't seen start snowballing whatsoever yet. And you can you can see it happening, though. Like There's so much about getting that one singular combo off of. The Sona has to land on top of the Amumu ultimate, otherwise it doesn't seem to work. But the counter to that, which Dirtnap Gaming is executing fairly well, is to just attack in waves. They send in one or two. So at very best, they get it on the tanks. If they don't blow it on the tanks, the tanks pressure Raging Kenny out of it, so that if they do land the Amumu ult on the back line, they can't follow it up with damage, right? So it's very tricky to land so much AOE on a team that is as mobile as Dirtnap Gaming. Chris already very strong here as Shen. He's going to become a bit of a, a movable object, I guess, very soon, sure. because he's got the Sunfire Cape already. Warmogs is almost certainly next, I guess. It's got to be. The Kindle Gem is there. I don't... He's just going to let that sit for quite a while, I'd imagine. He's most likely going for Warmogs next. And surely at this point, and despite the fact that Gypsy has got that Warmogs, I don't think he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chris right now. That's one of the things that happens with Shen once he gets a whole bunch of health and kind of hits late game. He's a passive laner early, but because he's such a strong split pusher, his 1v1, this is what makes him such a strong split pusher, is his just dueling potential against almost everyone is immense. And there you go, the taunt goes on towards Point Gypsy, puts a bunch of damage down, lets the Sunfire Cape do the 40 tick damage. I probably thought about going down there. You can see the saplings sat around, that means they've already cleared out the race. 
poking on the turret, but still not really touching this big turret. They haven't been able to get anything through. Low Kevin and Raging Kenny doing quite a good job keeping it back. At some point, though, probably when Brawly gets his next blue buff, they might try to set up one of those extended sieges that we see so often from Jace teams, but they just can't do it yet because they know that if they tried to do it now with no blue buff on Jace, they'd run out of mana, and then they'd be vulnerable. So they're waiting for the right moment. They can stall quite easily because of Chris's strength and his ability to split push with that stand united off of cooldown. At this point, they're just biting their time. Yep, and Chris is happily continuing to farm. Highest farmer almost on the map. And just looking across the board, you can see the farm. Where the gold advantages are, they are far superior in terms of farm. Raging Kenny in the meantime, while he's been in the mid tank, he's always had someone sat with him. So he's still only at level 12. Nine, level 9 for Ridgeron. He's died a couple of times. Meanwhile, level 15 for Chris. Long, long way ahead. Just getting all of the farm, all of the free farm as it happens. And probably Echo, they're quite happy to just sit around. They're happy to let Shen get fed. And if we take a look at the gold here, you can see 7,700 gold on Shen. It's actually 8,500 on Echo, but that's another story. And when you add on to that, that he has two levels on pretty much every one from One Trick Ponies, that kind of 1,000 to 1,500 gold advantage he has on people is just multiplied by his level advantage. The stats you gain from a level is about like seven to 700 to 1,000 gold per level, depending on what champion you're on. So level advantage is massive. And the fact that, you know, the 5 0 1 Graves, he, he doesn't really need that much farm right now. He's quite happy to let Chris get it. You can see Porn Gypsy trying to put the damage down on Chris, but really, that is hard work to just get any any damage at all. He's just going to taunt across. Yeah. <laughs> He's just been spamming that faint shield. He maxed it before his taunt on Shen, so it's 250 damage he can reduce every 4.35 seconds. Yeah. How are you dueling that as an old app? It's not working that well. It is not working very well at all. And meanwhile, the rest of the team seem a little lost as to how to deal with this. You can see they're desperately trying to farm out any advantages they can. So, Jan, looking at this, if we were to go into a straight up 5v5, we might see a 5v5 right now because they're going towards Dragon. This is how they're trying to deal with it. They might not know how to deal with it, but if we get a 5v5, this is all going to be about who the Amumu ult lands on and if they can combo a Misfortune ult in with it. There's going to be a home guarded Chris coming into this fight as well. Shen ult coming in. There he goes. There's the Shen ult coming in. Is it going to be enough though? Chris is waiting for his time. He's waiting for his moment. He's waited a little too long. And Raging Kenny was taken out of the fight. Lil Kevin was taken out of the fight. So they're not getting the right people. The damage dealers were just wrecked, taken out of that fight. And you can see this is just the two tanks trying to do damage at the back there. Well, Scooper Chris picks up one, but it doesn't matter. Raging Kenny was taken out of that fight before he began. He couldn't get it off. They could, they just can't get the combo. Chris came in with JD Wu, and you can't stop Shen and Maokai from getting to Misfortune, especially when you consider the home guard boots are in there. No combination with the Amumu ult means no damage for their team, in all in all honesty. And that was a brilliant fight by Dirtnap Gaming. Even then, he has to cancel it after half a second because Chris taunts in. Straight in, he's gonna try and get a double up, trying to get on Profit there. But Profit just backs away. And that is the mid turret down. So, turret advantage for the first time with Dirtnap Gaming in this game. 32,000 to 39,000 advantage continues on for Dirtnap Gaming here. And one trick ponies, they've still not managed to land the perfect combo just yet. And I don't know if they're going to get to that point just because of the dive potential of Dirtnap Gaming. Prawley as well, getting very strong on that mid lane, Jace. Bloodthirster, Last Whisper, and a Brutalizer. So there's not much armor coming down from the squishies on One Trick Ponies. If they ever get hit by those shock blasts, it's going to be close to half of their health. Raging Kenny just trying desperately to get farmed up, but until he finds a way channel an ultimate into a taunt, which is going to be never. Uh, they're going to have trouble in fights. Well, that's the way it is. And sadly for Lil Kevin, he's he's yet to be able to... Really, I've not, I don't think I've seen one single Death Lotus really go off at all. Nope, it just... They're getting dove too hard. They, they put all their eggs in the AoE basket, and it's getting shattered right now. The basket is indeed tipped to one side and it, everything is rolling <laughs> out, including Scuba Chris's little Amumu. 
They're going to try and put a bit of pressure on the turret. And really, they're going to try and force the fight here, it seems. Yeah, they got to go fast. Once again, Chris has his ultimate up, and he's split pushing that side. It's going to be on Dirt Nap Gaming. They don't need to initiate. They can continue to clear the waves, and One Trick Ponies will have to fall back at some point. Otherwise, they are conceding turrets to the split push. And Regiron is taking that shock blast every time. Before the fight begins, he's always below half health. It doesn't help when he needs to get into the fray, really, to land those crescendos if he's starting at half health. That just means Echo is going to one-shot him when he goes in instead of two-shot him. And here we can see Chris just working down that bottom turret. The split push continuing to work successfully. Pawn Gypsy realizes he just has to take the minions. Can't fight him really 1v1. He's just got too strong. He's got that Spirit Visage now. He's just building ever so more items. And honestly, he's got that much gold building up. He's up to what? 9,300 gold compared to 7,400 of Pawn Gypsy. He can't compete. And this is what happens when you get that kind of mid-game medium to large size gold event is everyone just feels so fed on the other team you can never 1v1 the opponent that you were landing against it just becomes such a struggle and especially if Echo is able to complete his last whisper on Graves which will be very shortly as he's sitting on 1200 gold team fights from one trick ponies are going to be really really difficult and the game's stalling out a little bit but slowly but surely you can see that Dirt Next Gaming's advantage is, is grinding them through this game. 6,000 gold advantage, 6 kill advantage, 1 tower advantage, and a place potentially against Meat Playground coming up for them. How would you see that one? How would you see if they were to get through to Meat Playground? And that's an if for right now. Yeah. One Trick Pony are not out of this just yet. One good solid combo could turn things for them. With the way Dirt Next Gaming's playing right now, I'd say it's. I'd say they'd have a great chance because they're not seeming to make many mistakes. They seem to have very well thought out compositions. They counterpick the crap out of our minds during champion select, <laughs> having the Shen with the Smite in champion select, and then going with the Mount late. But considering I mean, Playground won in 20 minutes, it makes you think twice about that too. Considering they won in 20 minutes, it must mean they are ready for this one. But they have managed to successfully get a blue invade here, and that's being given across to Chris, I believe. Did, but the rest of the team are closing in. Oh, have they chose to go the wrong direction there? They're all going to be in the tri-bush, and I've got a feeling we're going to see Chris coming straight across. Uh, they should be able to back away from this one, given right time. The acceleration gate has gone out there. Shock Blast comes through. Shock Blast actually missed this time. Pawn Gypsy was the one that took the brunt of it, and I think the rest of One Trick Ponies are going to back away from this one. Yeah, why is he so? They've got the speed from Regiron. It's actually interesting. You can see... If Dirt Nap Gaming wants to initiate to their fullest potential, Chris actually has to start in base because he wants to get those home guard boots going so that he can fly in on the back of Maokai's Twisted Advance. They might be looking to do something like this around the red buff area of One Trick Ponies. But Chris actually just going back to clear out that top lane a bit. Could just be able to see a bit more split pushing. So let's see if they continue on their poke. They have the Jace to poke it through. They have Graves, who's pretty well fed. 5-0-5. Not a lot of gold. And you get to see they're just using the acceleration gear to keep poking back and forward. Ghost has been used by Pawn Gypsy. Let's see if he's going to go on towards. He goes for JD Rude. There's Stan United coming straight in, and immediately they turn their attention to Scuba Chris. Raging Kenny is actually okay at the back at the moment. Meanwhile, you can see Pawn Gypsy went deep in there. There's the bullet time. Has it hit enough targets? No, Lil Kevin's been taken so, so low. But Chris, Chris just getting through the team. JD Wu goes, twisted, advanced straight onto Regiron. Oh. And probably just picking him off from the side there. Raging Kenny, he's going to get taunted. He gets dunked on. It's a triple kill so far for Prolly. Now they're going to chase on towards Pawn Gypsy. Pawn Gypsy already used his ultimate. This could actually be potentially an ace. They're going to get Pawn Gypsy down. And I think the shot nice blast will finish shot. it off. Technically a quadra kill, but a little bit too delayed. And that is going to be another turret down the bottom. The mid lane Jace picking up the four kills in that fight, and that was a desperation engagement by one trick pony. That was the first time they were actually able to get a good MF all down with the Amumu. And you can see it almost turned it. Everyone on Dirt Nap Gaming recall calling right now is pretty damn low. If they didn't have that huge gold lead and that huge item advantage going into that fight, they probably would have lost. You really have to hand it to them to know when they're strong enough to brute force and fight and engage like that, because previously they may have tried to disengage that one. Yeah, it'd be good to see whose calls that was. To say, no, we can fight. I'm guessing it would have been Profits. You know, secrets mm -hmm. in his name. He would have spotted it. <laughs> he would have known it was coming. 16-6. And 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is looking like it's going to be Dirt Name Gaming facing. Whoa, someone is low. It is going to be Regeron getting caught out there. Well, this is surely going to be brute forcing their way into a barrel. Yes, so they have picked up an Oracles. At this point, now people picking the Oracles up really only in the end game when they're trying to clean out and Baron dance these areas. They got to be a little bit careful putting themselves in this tight corridor. This is just the sweet spot for Mumu Alts, Commod with Misfortune, but they're starting that Baron straight away. They're scouting with Wards and Maokai Saplings, and boy, they are looking to peel. Here they go. That's going to be the acceleration gate. They dash up towards Pawn Gypsy. Pawn Gypsy pops the Ragnarok. He's not going to get caught out. Oh, that combo is horrible. They did manage to catch it because the Sad Mummy came out. They are going to get a good crescendo. Oh. Very nice crescendo. They catch down one. They get two. Can they get it towards Profit? They're going to take down Echo as well. And this has turned very well for one trick pony as Olaf comes rampaging through. But Chris is still in there. He is so tanky, so much damage. He can clean up here. Regeron goes down. And you can see Raging Kenny trying to do as much to him. He just can't dent Chris. He's got so much damage. He dodges the axe. He turns back around. He's going to go on Born Gypsy. Born Gypsy's just one hit away. He takes down Born Gypsy. Now Raging Kenny can he have enough. The shield gets popped. He should be able to take him down, but he can't catch up. He can't up. catch. He ran out of, he ran out of steam. Holy crap, Chris is strong right now because that is a raid boss if I've ever seen one in this game. And that was just, you know, you realize that One Trick Ponies has two tricks in their team comp. They have the Amumu comboed with the Misfortune ultimate or Crescendo comboed with Katarina's ultimate. And the second trick paid off during that combo. They thought they disrupted it when Shen landed the perfect taunt onto Misfortune's bullet time, but they got wrecked by Katarina's ultimate in that corridor going up to Baron. And despite that large lead, if it wasn't for Chris's incredibly huge Shen, they would have lost that horribly and probably given up a Baron. So, is it the armor stacking? Everybody says armor doesn't count. It's all about the hit points, but they've got two Randy and Zomans, that big tanky frontline, Porn Gypsy, Scuba Chris, getting in there. Did they take enough brute force front from Prolly to send this one off? They're going straight back into it, chat. They're going straight round, and Scuba Chris completely Ouch. caught out of position. They were not ready for that. That was a lot of pain. There was the home guard Shen all coming in once again, just chasing down Scuba Chris. All the armor in the world will not help you from five. And this is really tricky for one trick ponies. They know they're giving up the Baron. They can't even push the mid turret. And right off the back of a huge team fight, almost trade, they lose the Baron. And that's it. There it goes Baron Nasha down. 35 42. And they are going to just trade and say, okay, we'll have the dragon. We'll try to keep ourselves in it, despite the fact they are a long way behind in gold. 8,000 gold behind. That's going to switch to 7k as soon as this dragon goes down. So that's a lot of big items. The biggest thing they have on their edge as this game stretches later and later is Dirtnap Gaming really only has one damage source, whereas One Trick Ponies has multiple damage sources. It's almost all physical damage coming out from Dirtnap Gaming. So they can get more efficient defenses than Dirtnap Gaming can. They can go all armor and health. Whereas Dirtnap Gaming, health, MR, and armor, obviously, to say something incredibly obvious. But it's just a matter of the 7,000 gold advantage isn't nearly as bad as it may seem. As it may seem. And the fact that they've only lost one in a turret so far. And they're up in the turrets. Dirt no, they're down in turrets. They're down in turrets. Dirtnap Gaming haven't lost an in a turret yet. But actually, you know, the middle and the top one are very low. And the, and the bottom one is at half health. So they've had a good go at them, whereas you look at the middle completely full, top completely full. So if they were to turn one good team fight, they could pick up a couple of turrets. The trickiest thing about this, though, is right at the moment where they're kind of ready to turn it around, Dirtnet Gaming has Baron. So you don't really want to fight this team while they have this buff, and it's a matter of how many advantages Crawley and Profit can pull out of this tactically before that Baron is up. They're trying their best to keep Pawn Gypsy out of this one. They want to keep him farming at the top, but uh, wow. Like I mentioned, that was at full hit points a moment ago. Look back at it, 299 hit points. That's how quick they straight that down. Bottom turret is already gone. And you can see Scooper, uh, sorry, because Chris is pushing in there. There is the mid turret down. Chris continues to pressure on Pawn Gypsy, trying to push it out there. And now they are going to continue poking through, not catching on towards anyone. Regeron looking maybe to try and get a crescendo, Snook, sneaking across there, they're going for the inhib turret. Here we go, it's going to be the... Are they going to go for Kirsten the Sad Mummy? Has to pop, he's going to get some blitz rate. Bullet time, that's quite well, they do manage to get one down. You can see Echo also taking down very low, the little Osman, he does finally get dropped there, but he's a little bit too late. Kevin 
Ghost he does manage to Guardian was popped as well. Raging Kenny now in trouble. Chris is all over him and the damage is just too much for him to deal with. He was trying to guide him as much as he can. Poor Gypsy now on Chris. He can't do enough damage to prevent Chris just walking away. You called him a raid boss. He is absolutely dominant. It's like trying to hit an incredibly mobile brick wall. I mean, I don't know how to say it. It's just not breaking every time he goes into those fights. That was a pretty good initiation by One Trick Pony, but they just didn't have enough to break through everything that Dirt Knight Gaming had. The Baron buff is so potent when they're tanking this. And look, even without the minions coming through, tanking up these turrets, they might look to end on this push. There's a couple seconds death timers left on One Trick Pony, but they're going for the end. They're going for the end, and they could well get it. You can see just a couple more hits. Here comes Gustav Safari. He hasn't got it available. It is the game. It's 26-12. And Dirt Nap Gaming finally take it home. But you saw just how close. One Trick Ponies, if ah. they'd have just landed them combos a little bit earlier, they could have turned it earlier on. But by the time they finally landed it, it was a little too, little too late. It makes me really excited for the rest of this group because that game was quite close. It seemed like Dirt Nap Gaming had control for the most of it, but then there was that one fight in the Baron area where it seemed like they might turn it. Then you realize they only had the physical damage coming out and it was maybe going to turn around, but with the Baron buff, they pushed through, they got that last team fight, and I feel like they closed it right when they needed to. So, it is going to be one trick ponies versus I'm going to think Falafel Gaming. Falafel yes. Gaming. Got to remember be next their name. On this stream. On this stream, Meet Playground versus Dirt Nap Gaming. That is going to be the winner's match and, of course, the loser's match. So, the group is starting to lay out as we kind of expected it, Group mm -hmm. C. The question is who will get first place in the group? We'll find out because next match will be coming up, ladies and gentlemen. So, coming up right here, it will be Falafel Gaming versus One Trick Ponies. The winners will move on and the losers will be going home. It will be our third team that goes out. We're going to find out. We'll be right back after this commercial break.